In the previous video, I made a mistake in the completing of the square of, of s squared minus 4s plus 36. So this uh, denominator should not be 4. It should actually be, uh, this should be a 2 right here. So I'm going to take this away and fix this, which is going to change this value of a that we have here. So uh, actually, if you, if you type this into Wolfram Alpha, you'll get s minus 2 quantity squared plus the square root of 32. And so then our value of a is positive 2. And you get e to the 2t times sine of root 32t. So my apologies for that in the last video. Um, now we'll take a look at one more uh, that's very similar, except it has s in the numerator. So because it has s in the numerator, this is going to be related to cosine. So easiest way to look at these is, do you, do you have a constant in the numerator or do you have an s in the numerator? So once again, we're going to have to complete the square here on the denominator, which we already know from the previous example and our corrected version of the previous example, that this is going to be s over and the completing of the square of the denominator is s minus 2 squared plus, and I'm just going to go ahead and write the root of 32 squared because that's really just 32. And uh, so I can see what my value of b is. It's square root of 32. But if we look at the Laplace of e to the a t times cosine of b t, then the numerator should actually be s minus a and the denominator should be s minus a squared plus b squared. So this should be plus b squared there. So I noticed that what I have here is not the same as what I have here. This, this right here needs to be s minus 2. So how do you get an s, how do you get a minus 2 in there? The multiply by one trick won't work because that will, that can create a coefficient of s, but it cannot create another term in this expression. So this is what we call, we, to get that s minus 2 in there, we'll do the add 0 trick. Okay, so the add 0 trick is exactly as it seems. You, whatever you want up here, you put it there, but then you immediately remove it by canceling it out. So the way I could do this is since I want an s minus 2 there, but that obviously changes the numerator to counteract that so that I've essentially not changed this expression at all, I would have to add 2 as well. So then I'll have s minus 2 plus 2, which is still just s in the numerator. Now what I'm going to do is because this plus 2 is making things more complicated, I'm going to have to split this up into two terms. Now, since it has a common denominator, I can write that this is the Laplace inverse of s minus 2 over s minus 2 quantity squared plus the root of 32 squared plus 2 over quantity s minus 2 squared plus the root of 32 squared. So again, these are common denominators. Think about this just like if I had 3 plus 1 over 5 and I wanted to split that up into two separate fractions, I would split it up into three-fifths plus one-fifth, which is still just four-fifths. So I'm doing the same thing here, but my numerator and denominator consist of uh, variable expressions. So because I'm taking the Laplace inverse of a difference, I can take the Laplace inverse of the first one, and I can add that to the Laplace inverse of two over s minus 2 squared plus the root of 32 squared. And this I know is going to invert into my a value is 2, so e to the 2t times the cosine of the square root of 32t. It's not the square root of 32t, it's the square root of 32 times t, like that. Now the second one, uh, this has a constant in the numerator, so this should be exponentially, so this is going to be e to the 2t times sine of something. Now I know that that something is going to have to be the square root of 32t, but the problem is that I need a square root of 32 up here. So I'm going to do that multiply by one trick. So I'm going to, I need a square root of 32 in the numerator, so I'm going to multiply by square root of 32 over the square root of 32. 
Now, I don't want that 2 in there, but I could factor that 2 out and multiply in the root 32. So here's what this is going to look like. I'm going to pull that 2 out. I'm basically going to, because multiplication of root 32 and 2 can take place in either order, so if I pull out 2 and leave that over root 32, then uh, by switching those, I, I get exactly what I need here to invert into the exponentially changing sine function. And then 2 over the root 32 is the factor by which I am off from that being exactly e to the 2t times sine of root 32t. That's a little bit more of a complicated one because whenever you do have that s in the numerator and you don't have that right term, you, you kind of have to do this add zero trick, which will always lead you to breaking it up into two pieces. One which will be an exponentially changing, uh, exponentially changing amplitude cosine and one with the same thing but with the sine. This one's used a little less frequently, but it might be a trick that you do need to use occasionally. All right, well, let's go about solving a differential equation with these new tools. The process is exactly the same. We're going to take the Laplace of both sides. Uh, we're going to isolate Laplace of y. We're going to divide everything over. We're going to simplify, and then we're going to invert back. So to perform it on this one, we're going to take the Laplace of both sides, Laplace of y double prime plus 25y and that's going to equal the Laplace of zero. Now, here we can use the linearity property and say this is the Laplace of the second derivative plus 25 times the Laplace of y and equals the Laplace of zero. Okay, so this is our new formula here. This is going to invert or uh, transform into s squared plus s times, or sorry, s squared and I'm just missing the Laplace of y here, so this is s squared Laplace of y minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0 and now I the Laplace of y I cannot take because, again, y is some function of t, and we don't know what it is, so you can't really perform this integral, but that's okay because later we're going to invert the Laplace of y. Now, the Laplace of 0, that's the Laplace of a constant, and the Laplace of a constant is 0 over s, which is just 0. So uh, I, I will have, now I can make my substitutions for the given initial conditions. I know that y of 0 is equal to uh, 1, so I can substitute out a 1 here. y prime of 0 is negative 1, and so that's going to give me s squared Laplace of y uh, minus just s plus a 1 plus 25 Laplace of y equals 0. Almost there. So now I need to uh, deal with my Laplace of y and uh, get everything else to the other side. So I'll have s squared Laplace of y plus 25 times the Laplace of y equals, I'm going to add the s over and subtract the 1 over. Now I'm going to factor out that Laplace of y. So I'll have Laplace of y times s squared plus 25 equals s minus 1. So we're almost there. We need to divide both sides by s squared plus 25. And what I recommend doing is dividing each term separately by that s squared plus 25. So you have s over s squared plus 25 minus 1 over s squared plus 25. So this is already taking the form of a cosine. We have the s, the s squared, and then we have plus a constant. Here we have a constant in the numerator, so this is its inverse is going to be related to sine. But remember that the Laplace transform of sine of a t is a over s squared plus a squared. 
This one I'm okay on. So this is my cleanup step. I'm getting it ready for the inverse. Well, 25 is 5 squared. And same thing here. We have s squared plus 5 squared. Now I want this to be a 5 so that this constant and this constant match. I can invert both sides now or I can clean up and just get everything in order before I take the inverse so that the inverse is a quick process. So in order to get this to become a 5, I'm going to multiply it by 5 fifths. So that 5 will go into the numerator, that 1 fifth will stay outside, and now I can prepare myself to take the inverse by saying, okay, this is Laplace of y equals, and now I'll have the inverse Laplace of y of both sides. So the inverse of the left equals the inverse of the right. Um, the inverse Laplace of the Laplace of something is just the something. And I'll have y on the left. I'm going to take the inverse, since I have a difference here, I'm going to take the inverse of s over s squared plus 5 squared. So that's an s there. And over here, I'm going to, so remember, I wanted that 5 in the numerator. So this is going to be s squared plus 5 squared. And this is going to be the Laplace inverse of that. But remember, we had the 1 fifth there as our factor so that the 5 still cancel out. And we really are still just dealing with 1 over s squared plus 25. Now this inverts nicely. That's why we take this little moment to clean things up before you invert it, just so you're not constantly writing down all these inverse signs. And the Laplace inverse of s over s squared plus 5 squared is the cosine of 5t minus 1 fifth. And the inverse of 5 over s squared plus 5 squared is the sine of 5t. And that's our final answer. Now, if you remember, uh, another way to solve this is by not using Laplace transforms, but if you're, you're missing, we're missing that y prime term in there. So in terms of a spring mass system, this is an undamped spring mass system. And the way we might have seen this before in terms of solving it is we would have guessed something of the form y equals sine of something t. So we can just call this sine of like a t, for example. And then the reason we guessed that is because the only function that when added to its second derivative can possibly cancel out is sine or cosine. So we, we actually guessed sine of a t and cosine of a t. And we took our derivatives and said the derivative of sine a t is a sine squared of a t. And the second derivative of that would be negative a, oh, sorry, this should be cosine. And the second derivative would be negative a squared sine of a t. And then we plugged it all back in and, and solved for, okay, so y prime, which is negative a squared sine of a t plus 25 sine of a t, which is what y is, equals 0. And now we, uh, we know that negative a squared plus 25 has to equal 0. So a squared equals 25. And therefore, a equals 5. And that is exactly the same thing that we got here. We got sine of 5t. Now we do the same thing for cosine in this guess and check method. And well, now that we know what a is, cosine will be the same thing. And using the superposition principle, we would say that our solution is of the form y equals k1 sine of 5t plus k2 cosine of 5t. But still, now we have to go plug in our initial conditions and go through that whole mess. So using Laplace transforms is actually really nice because you don't have to solve a system of equations to satisfy find k1, k2. Uh, we just get to plug those in and we get to stream our way down to the very end. So it's a nice algebraic process. In the next video, we'll take a look at one more example where we actually do have damping.